But are you a socialist? But are you a socialist? But are you a socialist? Socialism preferable to capitalism. My basic argument is that's a very low bar. That's not asking much. And I want to make that case as strongly as I know how. But I have a problem in the very beginning, as I always do, traveling around this country, talking about this. And that is, we are like bears in this country, coming out of a hibernation, about 70 years of it, since 1945, when everything changed from a society in which socialists, communists, Marxists occupied all the normal positions in society as teachers and workers and bureaucrats and unionists, when we had a New Deal that celebrated many of the objectives socialists have always supported across the United States, had a big picture over the war, the clerk's office where you bought stamps. And there was Uncle Sam with his hat, arm in arm with Uncle Joe, which stood for Joseph Stalin. After that, there was, not so surprisingly, a terrible reaction. The business community and the right wing in America was horrified that for the 1930s, we had had a program of raising taxes on corporations and the rich in order to fund the creation, for the first time in American history, of social security, unemployment compensation, the first minimum wage, and a public employment project that hired 15 million people. The rich had to pay, and the mass of the Americans got the benefits. This was so horrific, it freaked out the forerunners of the Koch brothers. And then an alliance with the Soviet Union finished off whoever wasn't freaked out already. And so in 1945, everything had to be undone. The New Deal coalition, for those of you who remember your history, socialists, communists, the CIO unions representing tens of millions of American workers, they're the ones that made all that happen. They're the ones that made Roosevelt do all those things. And they had to be defeated, and they were. And the way you break up a coalition is you find the weakest link, or what you can make out to be the weakest link, and suddenly communists and socialists who had been the militants making the 1930s the greatest unionization period in American history. We never had anything like it before. We've never had anything like it since. Communists had to be transformed, and likewise socialists from the great allies in the war, from the great vanguard of social programs in the 30s, they became agents of a foreign power likely to be interested in strangling your cat. And they had to be driven out of the unions, the 1947 Taft-Hartley, driven out of their teaching jobs, driven out of the consciousness of the American people who were terrorized about being interested in those things, as they have mostly been in the last 40, 50, 60, 70 years. A personal note. When I went to college as a young person, I was interested in learning about Marxism, and I asked my teachers in the university, what course can I take to learn about Marxism? Half my teachers explained to me there isn't any, nobody here knows anything about it. The other half said, oh, yeah, we know about it, but we're way too scared. We're not going to teach you anything about it. In my undergraduate and my graduate years, and I majored in economics. I'm an economics professor. Here's a fact. No one ever in any economics course assigned me one word of Karl Marx. Is that because he had nothing to teach us? Don't be silly. They were just afraid. 75 years of fear. There's nothing smart and nothing excusable in any of that. Oh, and let me mention, since it might be of some interest to you, the three schools I attended were Harvard, Stanford, and Yale. And if they don't have the courage, 
What can you expect from Eastern Kentucky? So I have a problem to talk to you about socialism because unless you're a very unusual American, and there are some, or a foreigner because the situation's different abroad, you don't know much about socialism or what you do know is 75 years out of date because it's changed a lot as I'm going to point out to you as I go through the argument. Okay, let's do it. Socialists disagree, they always have, from the beginning. Socialism is a product of capitalism, it always was. There was no socialism before capitalism came into being. Why? Because capitalism in the French and American revolutions made a big fat promise when it asked people to leave the feudalism that existed before and shift over to capitalism. It made the promise, as in the French Revolution, that capitalism would bring with it liberty, equality, fraternity, and let's add democracy and prosperity. Socialism is the movement that recognizes that what capitalism promised liberty, equality, fraternity, and democracy wasn't delivered and never was. And the socialism is a movement which, if it has anything in common among its different tendencies, is a notion that we can do better than capitalism. It's a yearning to do better. It's the kind of yearning slaves had to go beyond slavery, or serfs to go beyond feudalism. Employees and the people who empathize with them figure we can go better and do better than capitalism. That's what socialism is. But are you a socialist? Uh, I'm not sure what a socialist is. Well, but, I, I believe that the, but I believe that the government has a responsibility to care for the people. I'm not talking about dole. I'm talking about making people self-reliant, people able to take care of themselves. There are countries which are perfectly able to do that. The United States is an extremely rich country. It's perfectly able to do that. It chooses not to. It chooses to have homeless people. It chooses. It's, we are 19th in the world in infant mortality. 18 other countries save the lives of their babies better than we. How come? They just spend more money on it. They care about their babies more than we care about ours. I think it's a disgrace. And uh, this country has vast wealth. You just look at what something like uh, Star Wars, the money spent on Star Wars, already spent $20 billion on it. If these guys are permitted to go ahead, they will spend a trillion dollars on Star Wars. Think of what that money could be used for to educate, to help, to bring people up to a sense of, of uh, self-confidence to improve not just the happiness of people in America, but their economic standing, to improve the competitiveness of the United States compared to other countries. We are using money for the wrong stuff. 